Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nofel Tamimi, one of the team members at Device Startup Hub team. With me today, my colleague Khawla Suwedi, project manager of entrepreneurship department and the, the moderator of the session. Uh, Kimberly James, uh, project manager uh, of, of uh, entrepreneurship department, aside with Maria Melmihiri. On behalf of Dubai Startup Hub and Dubai Chamber team, and our partner from Virtual Zone, I would like to welcome you all to the networking series event dedicated to subject talent. Before we start, a short uh, poll has been popped on your screen. Uh, I'll appreciate if you can fill, fill up the poll to see who we have with us uh, from the audience. It will stay in your screen 30 minutes. Um, and yeah. Uh, in the meantime, I would like to remind you that you can ask your question during the session uh, anytime in the Q&A box, and we will be addressing the question during the uh, question and answer part. So without any further ado, let's start our session and switching to you, Khawla. Thank you very much, uh, Nof, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the session. Uh, before we start, let's see who we have uh, with us in the audience. We have um, the poll results should tell us that we have 72 of entrepreneur, 22 employee, and 6% uh, of the investors. Welcome all, and I hope this session will be benefit for you. So uh, before we start, I would like to introduce ourselves, uh, Dubai Startup Hub. Uh, we are an entrepreneurship initiative from Dubai Chamber. And uh, our mission is to provide clarity uh, and guidance uh, to startup journey. We work with the startups and founder in the UAE and internationally, and we provide them with uh, services uh, through uh, our set of dedicated programs. Last month, we start uh, with our fifth edition of networking series. Um, so what's different this year? Uh, this year, due to the current situation, we shifted to be a virtual event and to keep creating and networking opportunities from, for the audience. Uh, after the session, I will encourage you to please uh, express your interest in who from the audience you would like to connect and we will uh, facilitate the introduction, of course. What else? Uh, the most important this, uh, in this uh, networking series is that we bring it, uh, we're bringing it together uh, with our partners for, from a virtual Zoom. We strongly believe that this partnership will allow us to bring uh, like more value to you. And we conduct or release uh, eight particular guidance uh, for every week. And we are already released three of them. Uh, you can easily find them in our website. Last but not, not least, in each uh, session, we have uh, two of uh, entrepreneur uh, who's joining the call. And also we have one from the, uh, our ecosystem. For this session uh, that's dedicated to talent, we have with us um, um, our uh, ecosystem partner, Ahmed Al Jasmi. He is senior executive with Hamdan Innovation Incubator. And also, we have uh, Nadine Imad, a co founder and chief product officer from Nexium. Unfortunately, Arif Sayed will not be joining us uh, through, uh, due to the emergency reason. Um, so without any further ado, I would like to start the panel discussion. Uh, with me, uh, I will have you, Nadine. And uh, as, we, as I mentioned uh, earlier, that this uh, week we have uh, uh, to discuss uh, the subject, an important subject such as talent. So before uh, I start with my question, can you please introduce yourself and talk about your uh, business? Sure. Hi, Khawla. Thank you very much for the introduction. I'm the co-founder and chief, chief product officer at Lexium. Lexium is the first digital law firm that is basically designed to make legal easy for entrepreneurs, startups, and tech companies. So we're able to do this by relying on automation through a platform that we've created and a technology that we've built to the point where we automate a very big part of the legal processes and we combine it with the best legal talent out there to make sure that legal is accessible to everyone. So we do everything from company formation to online video consultations. We create contracts, we review contracts. We really try to think of ourselves as the best legal partner that startups and technology companies can have to make sure that they have legal covered all over in a holistic way. 
Thank you, Nadine. Um, so before I start my question, I would like to highlight that uh, in Dubai market, uh, when it's come to talent, there are some misconceptions, such as it's very hard to find talented people in Dubai, or the business owner here focus on the money and the great idea, but not on people. So um, from your point of view, Nadine, what do you think? Like, uh, uh, is it the same when you start your uh, startup and how you build your corporate culture in, within your team? So from our experience, it's actually been the complete opposite. We found that Dubai was actually the perfect spot for us to get all the talent that we needed. And that's due to multiple reasons. It's very vibrant. It's very business oriented. Everyone's here with a very business oriented mentality. It's also very multi multicultural, which is very important to us because we operate in many different jurisdictions. So you come across uh, people who have different backgrounds, who studied in different places around the world, which also contributes to this talent and really uh, enriching the culture that you have within your organization. And this is something that we focus on a lot. So in our organization at Lexium, we focus a lot on the corporate culture, uh, the positive mindset, the passion that we put into everything that we do. And the city reflects that perfectly. And after COVID, we've actually noticed that accessing talent became even easier uh, in Dubai due to everything that was happening. So this is something that we were able to profit from as well. Uh, corporate culture is something that we, we actually focus on a lot at Lexium because it's really important to us to be able to promote the talent that we have from within the most for them to be able to cater to the talented people that we work with. So since we work with startups and entrepreneurs, we're already working with very talented people and our talented team needs to be passionate enough to be able to really bring out the best legal experience for them. Uh, so this is something that we really focus on a lot. We also uh, focus a lot on inclusion and we have, so we have two uh, female co-founders, my co-founder and myself, our third co-founder is also very a very big advocate for women empowerment, and it's something that we push a lot as well. Uh, perfect. And uh, one more question. Uh, when it's come to the hiring process as a co-founder, do you participate in this process? Yes, definitely. So we actually all, uh, all three of us co-founders participate in the hiring process directly. Uh, the level of involvement is actually different depending on kind of like which focus it's going to be on. So whether it's legal, whether it's in tech, whether it's in marketing, but at every point of the process, all of us are involved, especially at this point, because it's very important to us to make sure that the people working on this project are in the same mindset and the same spirit and the same vibe to really make it happen in the best way possible. And uh, Nadine, you mentioned that you are a three uh, co-founder woman. Um, and you, uh, I mean, in August, we released a panorama re report about the female and tech business. And we noticed uh, that the number of uh, a co-founder, a female co-founder is very low comparing to male. But uh, what is your uh, perspective on that? So um, just, just to clarify one thing for us, we are two female co-founders and one male co-founder. But he's actually a very big advocate of women empowerment. The majority of our team is actually females. Um, but uh, basically, my co-founder is the chief legal officer, and we're a legal technology company. So she holds the, the most important position that we have within the organization. I work on the product as well. So as you see, you have two of the, the highest key uh, positions that are operated by female entrepreneurs. And it's something that we encourage as well. Uh, we've noticed that there's been a shift in the past few years. So we see a growing number of female entrepreneurs really coming into the scene more and more. And I think that this is something that's really going to grow with time and it's going to increase as we go. Excellent. Perfect. Uh, that's lead me to my last question. Uh, you already mentioned that COVID somehow uh, was a positive impact on you. Is there any other challenging or any other uh, impact from this pandemic uh, time affected your hiring plan or your business in general? So... Uh, basically, I think us, like everyone, were really hit by surprise by everything that's happened this year. But the entire idea of being a successful entrepreneur is about uh, basically being able to shift any, any outcome into your advantage and being agile enough and having enough adaptability to bring out the positiveness of what's going on. And this is what we've applied and this is what we've experienced. It was maybe challenging at times, especially 
especially in the beginning. But we worked a lot on promoting uh, this positive mindset that we were going to create something massive and something good out of it. And that's what we've managed to do. So it actually helped us in the sense that people became more and more uh, familiar and open towards accepting digital solutions because everyone was stuck at home and everyone had to do everything from their laptops. So we really tried to focus on that and bring out the best of it as much as we can. And we actually ended up benefiting from the COVID experience as challenging and as hard as, as it was for us to have to change our plans altogether. Great, thank you very much, uh, Nadine. I'd like you to stay with us and uh, tell the Q&A question uh, with, from the audience. And now I would like to invite our ecosystem partner, Ahmed Al Jismi. Uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, if you can share with us and with the audience, especially the one who's dealing from overseas about Hamdan Innovation Incubator. Sure, Ms. Khawla. Thank you so much for inviting us in this productive uh, session. And uh, hopefully uh, you will enjoy this session, all of you. So uh, I would like to... Uh, to talk about uh, Hamdan Innovation Incubator. At first, my name is Ahmed Hassan Al Jassi, uh, an executive, uh, an executive, uh, a senior executive at Hamdan Innovation Incubator, part of Dubai SME under the Dubai SME Incubator, uh, which is established in 2002 uh, uh, by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Uh, he has decreed the, the establishment of the Dubai SME in 2002, as I said, I mentioned, to lead the march to support and develop entrepreneurs and encourage the youth to innovate and to establish enterprises. And one of the services provided in Dubai SME is Hamdan Innovation Incubator. And it's under the umbrella of Dubai SME, as I mentioned. So you will hear me uh, repeating uh, the high two sentence is a shortcut of uh, Hamdan Innovation Incubator. Uh, and it's a community of emerging creators, inventors, and entrepreneurs supporting them in their first steps towards establishing and launching their business ventures and designing prototypes for their initial innovation. At High2, we want to empower Dubai as the entrepreneurial capital of the MENA region by helping entrepreneurs start a business with a strategy establishment, tangible growth, and to attract talented entrepreneurs as well. Uh, why would you like to, uh, to join uh, High2 community? Actually, there's several benefits for joining High2 community, such as providing we are providing multiple workspaces ranging from virtual offices and flexible offices to closed furnished offices, in addition to common facilities and benefits, such as meeting rooms, internet services, uh, providing free consultations uh, by the team, uh, providing assistance in the development of prototypes and providing guidance to the ways of protecting the in intellectual property as well. I2 as well provide concealing that aims to help clients make better choices. I2 teamwork with entrepreneur in solving problems and issues, assist entrepreneur in finding an alternative for himself and in process empower him. As per to buy SME rules and regulations, the, the services are provided for Emirati and GCC entrepreneurs only. As I mentioned previously, we have several packages of the uh, flexible desks and uh, the, the private uh, office as well. Uh, the entrepreneur can get uh, can benefit uh, many many services by by selecting one of the packages provided in Haitu such as uh, getting the exemption uh, fees of uh, issuing trade license, uh, uh, the advisory from our team, uh, co-working spaces, access to Dubai SME services, and to join the events that, uh, that uh, coordinates with our, uh, that will be coordinated with our external uh, partners. Uh, plus the free internet, and unlimited free use of meeting rooms as well in the incubator. HI2 has been designed to focus on areas such as technology, educational, designing, and different businesses 
who considers innovation in their projects. Hamdan Innovation Incubator provides a number of developmental support services to help entrepreneurs developing their ideas and functions through the strategic partners of high two The partners provide a number of services to suit the requirements of entrepreneurs, covering a wide range of sectors such as intellectual properties, information technology, marketing, legal advice, makerspace, prototyping, robotics, and AI. HI2 also began to certify business incubators across Dubai as well. Dubai SME has launched the regulation of, uh, for starting business incubator and accelerator in Dubai. These regulations were introduced to ensure necessary guidance and mentoring support to SMEs and streamline for functioning of business incubators and accelerators. We have 10 certified incubators until now. Uh, the certified incubators such as uh, Reurban in the designing field, uh, many technology uh, fields as well, uh, and uh, plus the business incubators uh, as well. Uh, plus we have uh, certified the first incubator across the, U uh, the UAE and the school, which is James Modern Academy School. Everyone in the session can get the benefits and join these incubators to start their business. These incubators are open for everyone, not only Emirati and GCC entrepreneurs. Last and not least, my advice for all, to be a talented entrepreneur, you have to take the step. Don't pay attention to the negative impact. And uh, how to join Hamdan Innovation Incubator, it will be uh, provided uh, in the chat box. Uh, Plus, you can visit uh, our website for more information uh, by visiting uh, high2.ae website. Thank you very much, uh, Ahmed. Thank you for your input. And uh, that will take us to start the Q&A section. Before that, I would like to introduce uh, Natalia Shicheva, Manager of Entrepreneurship Department. She will join uh, uh, the speakers. Um, and uh, let's see uh, what we have from uh, the question. If you have any question, I would like the audience to either raise the hand or write your question in the chat box. And um... okay, uh, thank you, Haula. Well, I believe that uh, the tea. I can't start my video because host has stopped it. So, in the meantime, uh, let me start. Uh, thank you so much. And I think uh, it just I want to build on something that Nadine has mentioned early in uh, in her presentation about uh, the talent and accessibility of the talent in the market, and uh, to share a few points about we as startup and our experience of uh, helping the entrepreneurs and startups of uh, with. Um, uh, accessing the talent and what kind of uh, uh, incidents or anecdotes we faced in the past uh, four years uh, as we operate. As you know, so far uh, uh, we have been working with uh, more than 8,000 entrepreneurs who have gone through our programs and services uh, since our uh, inception. And we had quite uh, a bit of humorous and sad stories to, to share. And maybe even my team will unblock the video uh, by the end of my, <laughs> my, my short speech. Speech. So, um, so, speaking about uh, co-founders, and Nadine, you please uh, correct me if I'm right or wrong, it's very much like a, a marriage, a family, when you start a business uh, relationship with somebody. There is so many things that uh, could go wrong, and uh, there is so many things that... Uh, uh, um, things fall apart not even because of the business uh, business questions rather about some uh, individual uh, goals aspirations of individual founders and many of you on this call are quite familiar with smartphone competition for example um, we have been running the competition for five years and what the first year was very much where we learned the lessons uh, where we had some fantastic founders and we were very excited to award them with uh, their prize and what happened in the matter of uh, two three months after the uh, price uh, prices uh, were announced and we cheered them at the big screen um, the partnership 
collapsed and then it was we faced with uh, like a lot of issues and a lot of emotions coming from different founders saying like no it's me who is supposed to be awarded and they were treated me not nicely and then and so it we found ourselves in a very sensitive and tricky situation so um and that's why when um like these years in the past years when entrepreneurs are participating in the competition and we um require to disclose um much more information about uh, the co-founder arrangement was the agreement exist this is because of the reason to avoid this kind of uh, a situation but i believe that uh, mm, this is one uh, smartpreneur example is one of many many uh, that could happen and probably nadine was engaging and have seen in her experience with uh, some of the partnerships when um, and it's completely fine that at some point when founders decide to pursue a different uh, venue or avenue again for us um uh, about two, three years ago, two years ago, uh, we've been running a, um, a survey about uh, the biggest challenge that entrepreneurs are facing in Dubai. And, uh, and then we validated the survey result during the networking series. And one of the top uh, challenge was finding co-founder. Two thirds of the participants of our networking series actually said that they were actively looking for the co-founder or they were struggling to onboard one. Um, and we realized that this was something, and this is where we designed uh, the co-founded uh, co 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 Dubai program that we launched last year, and we're very excited to bring it in uh, to early 2021. What our program um, is designed for is we're selecting uh, the top promising startups, uh, companies who are actively looking to onboard um, a the, the, the co-founder with a strong complement in a skill set, be it finance, technology, legal, uh, operations, uh, the product development, and so on and so forth. But it's interesting, again, a sneak peek to you, what we've learned is that uh, um, uh, a lot of the time there is misperception that co-founder means uh, an investor and this is something that we had to work with and uh, maybe Nadine maybe like I'll pivot maybe the first question I will allow myself of how you worked out your co-founder agreement and did you go to the legal support how was this process for you thank you uh, Natalia thank you for that question you're actually raising a very good point because many people tend to ignore this aspect, many founders tend to ignore this aspect. And according to studies, the reason, the main reason of why startups fail is because of disputes that happen between the co-founders. So there are two main ways to tackle this, to make sure that this doesn't happen to you if you're just starting off with your co-founders. Uh, one, to really have the open conversation about what everyone is getting, what they're gonna be doing, what kind of roles, how you're gonna be segregating the shares, how are you gonna be allocating the role of each co-founder, just to make sure that everyone is comfortable. Uh, and the other one, of course, is to have a founder's agreement or a co-founder's agreement, uh, which you can generate on Lexium. And this agreement will actually help you and serve as a roadmap for you to really understand where are your limits and what you're getting out of this business, just to make sure that everyone is really, you know, very comfortable with the way things are going. Uh, for us, it was a bit easier than for others, I would say, because uh, my co-founders and I uh, and I are all lawyers. So we come from a legal background. We really understood the ramifications of everything. We're also certified mediators. So we're very used to having active listening sessions and really having open conversations. But the first thing we did was make sure that we had the proper legal agreements in place. And that would definitely be a great start for everyone who's looking to do the same. Thank you very much, Nadine. Um, let's have a question from the audience. Uh, we have with us Frank Scolona. You can uh, please introduce yourself and ask your question. I think Frank left the call maybe. Let's have another uh, one. Uh, we have uh, Augustine Mirono. If you please uh, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question, please. Uh, 
Hello. Hi. Hello. Well, thanks. Nice to meet you. I'm from Argentina. My name is Agustin Moreno. I, I started following the way I started up uh, since two, two months ago. Uh, and I'm really glad to, to, to share with you. I have a startup company, it's a software development company. We are specialized on blockchain and we provide consultancy and outsourcing for many companies. Uh, uh, besides that, we are develop, developing a project about blockchain and underlying assets. Uh, and these assets are real estate, like uh, a cryptocurrency, a stable cryptocurrency with un underlying assets um, that underlying assets are real estate. The, the main question is about, I'm very interested about the Dubai and Arab market uh, and possibilities uh, abroad. We are from Latin America and we believe in global business. And uh, the question is, uh, how, how do you see uh, the possibility for us, for Latin American companies to, to land in Arab, to make bonds uh, and to start uh, expanding uh, our business. Uh, how do you, do you see that, is that possible? Uh, and do you have any experience before with that in American companies? Uh, I will ask uh, Ahmed if you can answer uh, his question. Sure, uh, any company he, he can join us in Dubai uh, to start his business. Uh, as I said about the certified incubators, uh, he can apply in the incubator itself. Uh, I will share my email. So he can send me an email directly to, uh, to my direct email. And uh, I, will, uh, I will contact the certified incubator uh, regarding the technology part, uh, since he's uh, in the blockchain uh, uh, and development uh, area or field. So we can transfer him to these uh, certified incubators. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, let's take the second question from uh, Carlos Alami Alamila. If you can start by introducing yourself and uh, ask your question. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, hi, my name is Carlos Alamilla. I'm in Miami, Florida. And um, thank you for um, the, the invitation. I heard about you before because I was in Dubai a couple of years ago at Jitex. And that's when you know I discovered Dubai basically and uh, it was very impressive. And, and I was really impressed by uh, the whole technological, you know, development in Dubai, and and since then I, I've been in the I've been in the field of education for many years, and I want to develop in the process. I'm, I'm a startup basically. I wrote a book. It's called College Avenue, and it's the best guide to enter the best colleges in the U.S. with scholarships. And the book has been a successful venture, but I want to take it up now to a to a mobile app. And in which when I can help international students, MENA students, as well as Chinese and Spanish and, and American students um, to help them get into the U.S. colleges and universities and, and you know, with, with scholarships. And I wanted um, if I wanted to do a joint venture, you know, and maybe you know, with somebody in Dubai that with a technological background. Um, and is there any possibility to do that? Thank you, Carlos, for your question. Um, I will ask Natalia. Sure, sure. Simply because uh, <laughs> putting me on the spot, Carlos. Uh, well, I think it's a great um, question that you have. So there are two basically ways how you can go about a joint venture in Dubai. The one way is to go after the individual and uh, our 
I personally know a few couples, uh, a few people on this call specifically who are looking for the uh, startups to explore uh, potential opportunities. So this is one of the things. So this is the message to the community that we give right now on this call. So uh, gentlemen and ladies, if you are based in Dubai and you're looking for uh, um, ed education tech to explore uh, opportunities, please just do let us know and we'll connect you with Carlos. The second thing is uh, definitely uh, we will welcome your participation in the co-founder Dubai program that we are launching in January 2021. And I'm sure we will not even uh, blink our eyes how we will be already in Christmas time and the new year. So uh, one, month to, one, one and a half months to go. And the third way is obviously a corporate way because some of the startups we've seen uh, uh, some stories of our, of our uh, members who are going into the joint ventures with uh, established companies, big and small. So one of the things for you probably to explore also to check what other, uh, what are the universities potentially available in Dubai and the UAE. Uh, everything is available online right now. And to see if maybe uh, the private uh, universities potentially or government even ones would like to explore a joint venture with you. So either after individual or after the institutional one, but uh, definitely, um, and as uh, Ahmad also pointed, uh, Dubai is open for business and Dubai has been open for business even during the lockdown. Haula was running market access program when everybody was uh, sitting from houses and we were, our startups were discovering the business deals and potential collaboration collaborations online. So um, three things, individuals on this call, individuals through uh, co-founder Dubai program, and also advise you to check maybe there are some uh, um, high education institutions uh, who might be open for uh, to um, uh, jumpstart into the new technology venture with you as well. Thank you, thank you very much, Natalia. Let's hear from uh, Himadri Mandal. If you can please introduce yourself and ask your question. Hello. Hi. Hi. Can you get anyone, everyone hear me? We can hear you, yes. Hello. Okay. Salam. Uh, I am attending Dubai uh, Startup Hub. I have been watching it uh, for the last one year. You have been conducting very helpful and informative and positive uh, programs to the investors and entrepreneurs. Uh, my name is Hima Mandal and I am from India. I'm an entrepreneur. For the last 10 years, we are into uh, multi-commodity trading, uh, into fruits, vegetables, grains, and other food staples. Uh, recently, we have started uh, manufacturing nutraceutical products from fruits and vegetables, spices, and we want to invest in Dubai uh, as a uh, food processing or value additional products unit. So how can I get assistance from the government of Dubai uh, like as a startup hub over there, first of all, for getting a big customers like in the, in the, in the platform of B2B, B2G, or maybe uh, in the directly to the B2C platform first. Second, uh, how can the government... Uh, Give uh, what are the policies uh, with the with the tra with the trade policies or the uh, with the 26 Arab Union uh, countries because I want to focus in these 26 countries uh, especially with the Arab Arab League countries. Uh, how can you help uh, with the bilateral trade policies and the trade policies? What kind of liberty or, or what kind of limitations does an Indian investor have if he invests in in Dubai? Uh, for expansion uh, in the by processing and value addition from Dubai uh, to other countries. This is my question. Thank you, Ahmadri. Thank you very much for your question. I will ask Natalia <laughs> again to, uh, to answer his uh, question. Thank you, Haula. Well, uh, I would actually, uh, after my answer, I'll pass it to Nadine because uh, I'm sure Nadine is expert in uh, 
uh, selling to B2B. So mm -hmm. it's a part of, part, part, part of the question that uh, we've heard. So I think, um, uh, first of all, um, thank you so much for actually uh, bringing up and considering uh, the uh, bringing uh, food business uh, into the UAE and into the wider GCC region, as you know, and for no one on this call is surprised that food security, food safety, and sustainability of supply chain of the um, food is uh, exceptionally important uh, priority for the government of the UAE and Dubai. And not surprisingly that uh, Dubai having established itself as a, a logistics and trading hub in the past several years have built, uh, have put a significant and growing investment into building infrastructure around uh, the food export, import and the export as well. So there is a conducive infrastructure specifically uh, developed around uh, Javza, Davza, uh, free zones with uh, um, um, Specifically in uh, Javza um, free zone, there is a newly launched project specifically for um, wholesale um, trade that uh, what I heard uh, from your question, you might uh, greatly benefit from. And definitely when we speak about manufacturing, in-country manufacturing and uh, adding value uh, to um, uh, to, 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 the, to this specific uh, segment of the country. Uh, there is a number of uh, support measure, measures uh, that's available for you and we can definitely discuss it further. I would also would like to put on your radar that uh, very recently um, um, Dubai Chamber uh, has been um, proactively investing in initiating uh, the business groups and business councils and food and uh, beverages manufacturing group is one of the most active in the country and it's interestingly and it's a shame and it's uh, very sad that you you were not able to attend last week's session where we actually had the head of FMB manufacturers uh, group with us um, and um, so the group is the network of uh, distributors manufacturers uh, um, and and the people with the advisory and legal uh, uh, support that supports such businesses like yourself to explore opportunities in the local market. And what uh, we will do from our side, we'll take your request uh, uh, from uh, this session and we'll do the uh, needful introduction for yourself to the group and to the respective uh, business unit within Dubai Chamber who would be able to assist you and guide with the regulatory um, um, uh, aspects of your question. And then Thank my you, question, I, I would like to, to, to invite Nadim to compliment when it comes to the B2B sales, because we know food is different from the legal services, but uh, you st we still talk about uh, the uh, B2B segment. So any advice on that, Nadim? Thank you, Natalia. So to basically add on to everything that you were saying, because we actually help a lot of B2B businesses set up their structure uh, in the UAE. The UAE has always been an excellent jurisdiction to actually start a business. And the free zones that you mentioned, DAVSA is an excellent free zone to consider if you actually want to set up your structure. When it comes to the agreements themselves, once you want to do them in the market, it's always very uh, simple, very straightforward. And I'm happy to take any more, you know, particular questions you may have on the subject. I think we're going to be sharing emails after the session. So please feel free to send out an email and I'd be happy to answer any detailed questions you have. Thank you, Nadine. Uh, let's move to the uh, next question from Walid Al-Afifi. You can start with introducing yourself and ask your question. Good afternoon. Thank you. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Very good. So. I'm sorry, uh, Walid, your uh, audio is cutting. It's not that clear. So uh, while uh, Walid is fixing his uh, audio, let's move to the uh, next question from uh, Karim from Kamira Karim Ghaffari. Hello. Hello. Hi, Karim. We can hear you. Can you introduce yourself and ask your question? How are you today? Uh, I'm sorry to I'm drawing you late. Uh, I have a uh, many questions. Can I ask him? Uh, 
Yes, please. Uh, I have many, many idea about the startup and I sent my startup business plan to the Copenhagen already. And uh, I want uh, to know your some email that uh, I can send you my startup ideas. Um, can you uh, please send me uh, in personal mood? Yes, sure, Karim. We will share with you the Y Startup Hub uh, email and you can connect, uh, connect us and ask us any question and we will be happy to answer any question you have. Uh, let's see if Walid Al Afifi. Walid? I hope you can hear me now. Yes, I can hear you now. Go ahead, introduce yourself and ask your question. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, my Sorry, Walid, I think uh, you have uh, an issue with the audio. It's still not clear. Let's take a question from... Uh, from the inbox, I see Frank Scolona, you have a question. If you are still with us, please... Uh, Go ahead and ask your question. Hello, how are you guys? Um, Hi. Great, great. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, a, when it comes to a, a networking, um, we uh, we're actually interested in we're actually interested in uh, setting up an office out there uh, soon, very soon. A, we're trying to get a. A couple, a couple of things out of the way. Um, we're involved with PPE uh, and different commodities, gold, metals, oil and gas, etc. Um, and if there's any way for you guys to uh, assist us in in that networking process, if you know of anyone, uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, I can drop my email so you guys can can uh, can, can message us. But um, as far as you know, PPE and gold, are you guys uh, you know after COVID, did you guys start? Uh, being involved in PPE more, masks, gloves for hospitals and stuff like that, et cetera? Yes, I think, Howley, if you don't mind, I'll just jump quickly so to, to answer. Um, Frank, so indeed, uh, earlier this year, Dubai Chamber, uh, as a, a response measure to the uh, COVID-19 situation and pandemic, has responded to with the introduction of the PPE uh, supply network uh, to ensure that uh, the business community of Dubai, uh, the government and the private sector have access to the trusted PPE suppliers. And definitely we'll take it forward and we'll introduce you to the uh, team who is running PPE platform. So for this is on the, on the PPE side. On the commodity side, uh, your best entity to go and explore opportunities for network will be DMCC. So uh, that's where I would uh, highly encourage you. They run a lot of events, uh, networking opportunities, digital, um, and maybe soon they will start uh, something physical. But uh, this DMCC is for you and for PPE uh, network platform. Uh, we will um, share the details as well. Um, yeah. Sorry, I was muted. Thank you, Natalia. Uh, let's hear from Sujit. Sujit, if you can introduce yourself and ask your question. Hi, go good evening. Uh, my name is... Sorry, uh, were you able to hear me? Yes. You are right. Um, my name is Sujit. Uh, I have a company based out of Dubai, AMC Aerospace Technologies. Uh, we are into enterprise software development. And we have a product uh, which is uh, already developed, built, and uh, is, we have a couple of customers as well. Uh, right now, we are looking at uh, opportunity for expanding uh, our product as well as uh, our customer base. 
So uh, we are looking for investors, um, uh, basically angel investors who can invest so that we can bootstrap ourselves. ourselves. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm clueless into that area. So uh, would you be able to help me out in that? Thank you for your question. Uh, Ahmed, if you can uh, answer his question. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ajit. Sajid, uh, I would like to, uh, I, I have shared my email address. Just drop me an email and uh, we can guide you to uh, an investor here in Dubai. Uh, and we will look if there's any, any kind of uh, collaboration. Sure, sure. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Uh, we have a question from Walid al uh, What is Dubai Chamber is doing to help startup improve employee engagement, engagement of their employees? Uh, this is a major factor that help uh, startup success. I will uh, ask uh, Natalia to answer this question. Um, so, uh, um, so, so, sorry, I was typing the answer in the chat box. Khawla, <laughs> could you please repeat? Yes, he's asking, uh, what is that the Dubai Chamber is doing to help startup improve their employee engagement, uh, the engagement of their employees? This is a major factor to help a startup succeed, success. Okay, I want to highlight that uh, it's a great question. So um, again, I want to like the rest of the questions goes to Nadine and her experience because we will host a separate session about what Dubai Startup Hub is doing later in the months. So we as Dubai Chamber, uh, we focus on uh, procurement services from uh, startups. I think this is the best uh, great way for uh, uh, to, to, to benefit the business community is actually to give the business and the chance to the startups and entrepreneurs. On the level of our department, we could say that many procurement needs that we have be it's a digital marketing, be it uh, uh, some technology developments, uh, be it uh, um, all sort of support. We are doing the, the tendering process and procurement from the small SMEs uh, based in the in Dubai in the UAE. So we, uh, the way we support startups uh, by doing by giving the business. And in terms of how uh, we. Uh, um, uh, how we uh, maintain the employee happiness well there is a lot of ways right so the like definitely uh, uh dubai chamber is one of the uh, fantastic employers uh, available in the market but i think uh, i would like to revert back to what's mo most important for all organizations uh, of every size a bit private or public sector is hire the right people and this is where i will pass it to nadine and i will engage I invite nadine to speak about how nadine you are hiring the teams what kind of questions are you as a co-founder you engage in the hiring or not because uh, again as you know they say uh, hiring is guessing firing is knowing but hiring is still very very important uh, because you if you hire the, the wrong people no matter how much investment you put into the, their motivation their, um, their health benefits the productivity will still be low and your company will not grow Thanks, Natalia. That's that's very true, actually. Um, it's very important to really be able to foster and nurture the best talent that you can get, especially when you're just starting off your business, uh, to make sure that you're off to a great start. There are many different ways to do that. The first one is to have a really uh, organized hiring process to really understand what you're looking for in terms of resources. But it's also something that you mentioned before about how it's about joining a family more than actually just joining an organization to really have the same mindset, to have the same mentality, to, to share the same culture, uh, to be able to really be part of a team passionately and allow it to grow well. So this is something that's very important as well. It's also important to have you know, proper documentation in place for the employee to really know what they're going to be expecting. Um, not to have any surprises, to have everything very laid out, to have the honest conversation from the beginning. Uh, another tool that is used a lot by startups and, you know, new companies out there is offering stock options to make sure that, you know, you can attract certain types of talent, uh, especially when it comes to high level talent, if you can't really afford to bring them in on a full-time basis. Another way is to really consider having advisors, having mentors uh, to really allow you to have this kind of like support for your team as much as possible to help it grow. 
And it's also about really pushing uh, not only for the teamwork, but for the individuality of each team member within the organization to allow them to be able to be the best version of themselves so that everyone together can push towards the success of, of the business in general. Thank you very much, uh, Nadine. And uh, I think we reached the end of our session. Uh, I would like to thank Ahmed al Jasmi and you, Nadine, for your inputs and for your participation with us in this session. And I also I would like to thank Natalia Shichova uh, from Dubai Startup Hub. And uh, now I would like to uh, move and uh, move the mic uh, to uh, Nof. Thank you, Khawla. Uh, I would like to thank our speakers, um, Ahmed and Nadine, for being here with us today. And uh, uh, thanks, uh, Natalia, for uh, covering most of the question. Um, uh, for the audience, uh, please be aware that uh, uh, we will be sharing a short survey after the session, uh, aside with a registration link for the uh, next week uh, uh, session, which is uh, dedicated to subject Education. If you are interested to join, please RSVP now. Um, and um, uh, I believe we have reached uh, to the end of the day. So I wish everyone uh, a great night and uh, see you in next session. Thank you. Thank you so much for your for the productive session, uh, Ms. Khawla and uh, Ms. Nov. And thank you, Ms. Nadine, as well. Thank you very much. Bye, thank you.